as Purdue's head coach, and there is Mike Bolton Jr. ready to lead us off. Purdue's in the gray pinstripes, black lettering, and numbers Maryland in the Friday Reds and the white pants. Umpires today, Jeff Doy is behind the plate. Brian DeBrower at first, Wilson Rayner at second, and Robert Wrights is at third. These two teams in the top half of the Big Ten standings, Maryland's ahead of Purdue. They're six and three. The Boilers are seven and five. Maryland's already had their quote unquote by weekend. Purdue hasn't. We take a look at the Maryland defense. That'll be behind Jason Savicle. Left to right, Smars like Lambros and Petrutz. The infield was how it's been all season. LaRusso, Shaw, Keister, Hakopian, Luke Schliger back behind the plate after DHing on Wednesday. The Terps are coming off a 19 to 12 win over James Madison on Wednesday. Two homers from Elijah Lambros, the big factor. First of the day from Savicle, swung on and missed. A one, chopper foul to the right. Really important to get ahead of the count against Bolin, a guy that you do not want to put on base with his speed. So Savical quickly ahead, nothing in two. 54 strikeouts on the air for Savical. He misses upstairs. He's going to sit with that fastball in the lower to mid 90s and some really good breaking stuff as well that we're going to see from Jason Savical. One, two. There's the first strikeout of the day. One up, one down in the first. There's that two-seam fastball that we've seen Savico go at. It kind of more of a left-handed batter pitch, but another replay of it right here. You can see the way it has that cutting action as it tails away from Bolton Jr. Really tough pitch to pick up. Cooper Cornbloom in center field. And hitting second for Purdue. He watches the first one down the middle. This is a, a battery of Savico and Schliger that have been together now for three years, and they know each other quite well. Luke Schliger knows exactly what Savvy wants and when he wants it. They work so well together. It's very rare that you see Savvy give a shake off. Cornbloom is a Wichita State transfer from Woodway, Texas, a junior. He played three seasons for the Shockers. Purdue's coming off a win in their last time out against Butler. They swept Penn State last weekend as well. 2-1 hit to LaRusso. He comes in on the artificial green grass, or turf if you will, and makes the peg. Two away in the first. Good start for Jason Savicle. Jake Jarvis now. He's in right field. for Purdue today. And watches the first a bit low. Purdue trying to find their way back to the NCAA tournament. A winning record in the conference right now for the Boilers. Still some tough series ahead for them. They still have to play Maryland, Rutgers, Indiana, and Nebraska all of whom are having phenomenal seasons. So this is a really tough schedule. The start of today's game begins a grueling stretch for the Boilers. And Big Ten not projected to send that many teams to the NCAA tournament. So you got to be in the upper echelon of the conference to get in. And they're taking on the defending Big Ten champions this weekend. Savvy ahead one and two. And he got him swinging in the dirt. Schliger applies the tag, and that will end the top of the first. One, two, three, go the Boilers. The Terps are coming up in the bottom of the first. Steven, a 6'4", 215-pound right-hander, a sophomore from Williamsport, Indiana. His last start came last Friday night against Penn State. He went five and two-thirds. He up four hits, six runs, only three of those earned. He walked four and struck out four. 
Luke Schliger stands in for the Terps. He's had one heck of a week for Maryland. Was on base five times. On Wednesday, he's gonna ground out to short here on one pitch. Luke Schliger retired. Now Nick LaRusso. LaRusso is having an incredible season for Maryland. He earlier this season had a 31 game hitting streak that blew past the previous record of 19. You see his numbers as he steps to the plate. He is one heck of a player. And the first to him is a strike. Stevens had some really nice outings this year. He's also had a couple of clunkers. His best came on March 31st against Northwestern. He went seven innings and only gave up two to the Wildcats. As LaRusso hits the 0-1 into left, and that's the first hit of the ball game. Nick LaRusso on board with one out in the first. The shortstop sensation is one home run away from tying the all-time record here at the University of Maryland. Takes a big cut at the first one and was late on the fastball. Shaw having another amazing season for the Terps. He's been in that three spot really all season for Maryland. And he's consistently provided. There are very few shortstops that have the abilities with the bat that Matt Shaw does. Ball in the dirt. LaRusso took a step off, but it'll head back to first. You see that Paul Shager set the record for Maryland. He's got 43 Shaw sitting on 42 in his career. And if you feel like it's only a matter of time before he sits all alone. Hits this one a little squibber back to the mound. Steven's gonna throw to first. Shaw's retired. LaRusso heads to second. He's in right field tonight where he hasn't been a lot of the season. He's been the Terps DH for the majority of the season. And he's been a great hitter all season. The sophomore having a huge year for the Terps. Had a homer here on Wednesday in Maryland's 19 to 12 win over the James Madison Dukes. There were 19 total pitchers in that game. And the Terps put it away late with a six run seventh inning. Patrutz ahead two and oh. Trout's been so valuable since he's come back. He had some issues with his eye, but since he's come back, he's really filled in nicely, including the game-winning RBI last Saturday that gave Maryland the series victory over the Buckeyes. Terps have won 18 consecutive Big Ten series dating back to 2021. This year, Maryland has won the first two games of each series in the Big Ten that they've played, but they fell on Sunday. That's where the Terps haven't been able to pick up a win yet, but they've been awfully good on Fridays in the Big Ten, going for their fourth straight series conference opening win. Petrutz ahead now, three and one. Eddie Hakopian would be next for Maryland here in the bottom of the first. The Terps looking to get on the board early. Trust has been real patient with his at-bats in recent weeks, and that's something that Matt Swope really worked on with him, and I'm sure they love to see the way he's worked the count in his favor. Ian digs into the back of the batter's box. You see that left foot almost on the line, if not on the line, down there in the back of the box. The 3-1 is skied out of play foul, and the count moves full. Ian, a sophomore from Manua, New Jersey, he got a little bit of playing time towards the end last year. He was really big for Maryland in the regional here in College Park. And he's set to be a huge part of this team next year as well. 3-2, two, two out, bottom of the first, just underway this evening from College Park. And a 
quick check on LaRusso who was standing on second base as the throw was made. So three and two on Ian Petrutz. Steven checks LaRusso and the pitch. Left field and pretty deep. This ball is at the track. It is caught at the wall. A tremendous catch by Mike Bolton Jr. Ends the bottom of the first inning and robs Ian Petrutz of extra bases and an RBI. It's time what a grab in left field. <laughs> 70 and 72 record, his fourth season, a graduate of Delta State University back in 94. His boilers in the Terps, Scoreless after the first. That was a fantastic catch in left field by Mike Bolton Jr. to end the half inning and keep the game scoreless. Savvy ahead 0-1 of the cleanup man for the Boilers. It's their catcher, Connor Kaskinet, hitting 309 on the year. Strike on the corner. Good off-speed pitch there from Savvy. Already got two strikeouts in the first inning, looking for a third to here. Chopper, LaRusso cuts it off, throws on the run, and he has two putouts early on. Safe to say LaRusso playing here at Maryland these past two seasons kind of perfected that one hopper that comes right off the ground. He always knows exactly where he's gonna field that ball, and he makes that play pretty much 10 out of 10 times. Now Jake Parr, the first baseman. Parr's a senior from Gunnersville, Alabama. Hits the first one to LaRusso again. Boy, he's been busy over there. Quickly, two away in the second. Batting sixth, second baseman number 23, Paul Tates. Now Paul Tates, the second baseman. So Savvy looks pretty comfortable here early on. And we're gonna have a quick conversation here between Goff and Tates. Tates is a transfer from Indiana. If you can believe that. He went from one side, he went from, from good side to bad side, however you wanna see it in Indiana. I'm sure that didn't go over very well for a lot of folks at the Hoosers program. Bloomington to West Lafayette, definitely a little bit of a rivalry there, but now playing in the Boilermakers, he's had a pretty nice season for him. Ball a little low. He started all 50 games last season for Purdue. Check swing there, holds up. Had a really nice season for the Boilers. Hit 318 last year and 20 RBIs in Big Ten play for Purdue. 2 0 is scalded over near Campus Drive and foul. The Terps and Boilermakers uh, squared off to end last year's regular season. Maryland clinched the Big Ten title on the Boilers' field. They only played two games though, the third one was rained out and with the standings already decided, the game was canceled. So it was only a two game set between these two teams last year. But it's a beautiful night tonight. We're expecting some rain tomorrow. So interested to see what happens there. That one almost got the corner. That's a nice eye from Tate to watch it. It's ball three. And the payoff. On the ground to second. Keister, a couple of hops, it ate him up. And it'll trickle into center field, so Tates will reach on an error by Keister. It's like kind of an unlucky bounce right here. It came up at the last second, but that's definitely a play that Keister's got to make. We saw him make an error 
last week as well against Ohio State. So something that Maryland's defense got to clean up is the errors. Terps have been pretty good defensively for most of the season, but an error there on Keister. That one, I guess, a bit low to Joe Stevens, the third baseman. Nice spot right down the middle. Stevens, a junior. He is from Mount Cola, Australia. That is something that I have not seen. He's behind one and two. He played for, I definitely might say this wrong, Yavapi College in Prescott, Arizona in 2022. He spent his first collegiate season at Cal State Bakersfield in 2021. And now finds himself on his third team in three seasons. Check swing, he held up. Stevens had a hit in their win over Butler on Wednesday. This is on the ground to short. That eats up Shaw, and he can't make the play. Oh, boy. So two errors from Keister and Shaw, who are normally extremely dependable infielders. And Savvy's going to have to work a little bit harder here in the second. It's a good, it's a middle infield for this Maryland team that is known to be one of the better ones in the entire country, especially defensively. And two miscues in a row, something you just don't see very often. So Stevens reaches, and that'll bring up the DH, CJ Valdez. The first is outside. So that was very uncharacteristic from Keister and Shaw, who are normally really good with the glove. And now Savvy's behind 2-0. Oh. So you hope that doesn't have Maryland. a domino effect. Here are two plays that should have gotten Maryland out of the inning. Keister's, or excuse me, Savicle's pitch count keeps on going up. He was on the verge of a pretty quick second inning here. 2-0 and from Savvy. It's 3-0. and Valdez is a senior. He was all Big Ten first team last season. He made 46 starts as Purdue's DH. He had a nagging hamstring ailment last year. That was part of the reason he didn't play the field. He was the first Boilermaker to be all Big Ten first team since 2012. And Purdue's going to have the bases loaded with two out following Savvy's first walk of the evening. Evan Albrecht, the nine hitter, has a real good opportunity to put the Boilers up. And that's five straight misses from Jason Savicool. Dude's got him here in the bottom of the lineup, even though he's batting 339. Use him as that kind of second leadoff hitter, and this is a really dangerous spot if you're Savicool. On the ground to Shaw, charging, has to bare hand and can't make the play. One run scores, another run coming home. He's gonna be out at the plate. So one run is in for Purdue. They leave two more. Could have been a lot worse. It's one nothing Boilers. We head to the bottom of the second on Big Ten Plus. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Missed there. LaRusso would be next, and then Shaw after that. Good crowd tonight here at the Bob. Beautiful Friday night for some Big Ten baseball. 2-2 Two -two on Luke Schliger. Stays alive, fouls it back towards Gossett. It's another good at-bat here by Schlager, and a really important bat 
in this game as a whole. They're making Steven work a lot here through these first two innings. I mean, the result hasn't shown for it quite yet, but Maryland's still the three hits, one run, and Schlegger's a chance to do a lot more damage here. Luke standing deep in that left-handed batter's box, his left foot on the white line. Stays alive again. Good at bat from Luke Schligger. You feel like it's just become pretty common to see him put these good ABs together. Such a fun player to watch too. He's gonna make one MLB organization real happy. Come this June, you would presume he's gonna be off to the draft. Another 2-2 coming from Steven. Almost got him looking. He's upset, thought it was good enough. Started making his way back toward the dugout. Didn't miss by a lot. And I'm sure Jeff Doyd, the home plate umpire, did not appreciate that. So now the runners will be off on the pitch. 3 2 2 out to Schligger. Another foul ball. Luke Schlegger just hanging in there. Here, this at bat. Stevens just attacked him with the fastball every single time here of two outs. He doesn't want to extend this inning with the walk, so he's had to come in with that fastball. Schlegger just keeps on fouling it away. He's walked 19 on the year compared to 40 strikeouts. Correction now, 42 strikeouts. Another payoff. That one inside, a fantastic at bat by Luke Schlegger, it'll load the bases for Nick LaRusso. Watches one low. Patient approach, you would assume here for Nick LaRusso. As Steven trying to get the Boilers out of the mess, Bobby Zamarzlak hit a homer with no one on and since then, the Terps have loaded the bases. 1-0 is out of play our way, but over our heads. Patient approach, as you mentioned, LaRusso waiting for that fastball. If he can work the count into his favor, get into the two, three ball range, that's the most ideal for him to see that fastball, but one and one here, we'll see what he gets. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Nick LaRusso. Trying to give the Terps the lead here in the bottom of the second. Strike on the corner. Maybe a little outside, but it's a moot point. Now two strikes. Steven struck out. Hakopian and Keister, he's trying to put away LaRusso. He can't just yet. Man, Schligger and LaRusso both fouling off a lot of pitches. Giving Steven a lot more work here in the second. And a long rest for Jason Savakul as well. One and two on Maryland's third baseman, Nick LaRusso. Fouled again. That one at the plate. Man, they're just hanging tough now. Both these pitchers in this second inning have kind of had to be out there a little longer than they probably should have been the two errors last right. inning with Savakul and then the likely missed call there at first base in this one. Yeah, that's a good point. Savakul threw more pitches than he had to in the second as well. And Steven, Steven doing it here in the second for Purdue. He's still ahead of LaRusso, one and two. And Nick watches one high. That Luke Schligger at bat went nine pitches. And now Another long at bat here for LaRusso. That's on the ground to third. And the Boilers will get out of it. 
as Stevens steps on the bag. We go to the bottom of the second. Maryland's on the board thanks to a Bobby Smarslack solo homer. It's 1-1 here at the Bob. Savvy's first to the third, got a long rest. It was a long half inning for the Terps in the bottom half, so we'll see how fresh he is coming back out. The 1-0, downstairs. So 2-0 now for Savvy on Bolton. Again, three steals away from breaking Purdue's record. He launches this left center field in deep. Lambros will turn, and it's gone. Mike Bolton Jr., his third homer of the year, gives the Boilers the lead back. It's 2-1. So 2-1 Purdue now. Corp Cooper Cornbloom watches one low. So Mike Bolton Jr., Having an impact on this game. Made that great catch in the bottom of the first to take away extra bases from Ian Petrutz. And now a solo homer to give Purdue the lead back. High chopper over third. LaRusso gets a glove on it. But it bounces over him as Savvy goes from the stretch. Strike one on the outside corner. So the Terps got the run back in the bottom of the second, but now find themselves trailing again. Savvy, an 0-1 pitch coming. First to check. Kornblum, like you mentioned previously, been a big threat to steal. 17 for 18 on the year. Maybe that approach changes when you got Luke Schlinger behind the plate, but he can really run. Not going here in the dirt, and Schlinger blocks it. Well, let's be selective of when do they go to the off speed with Corn Bloom on base. Since the ball that gets away yeah. means he moves over 90 feet into scoring position. Yeah, you don't want any more runs here. You still got a lot of time left if you're the Terps. Big swing and a miss. Runner goes. The pitch is late. Shaw thought he had him. Jarvis was way out in front of that breaking ball. He picked a good one to run on. It's close. A lot closer than I thought it was. Shaw might have had an argument. Shaw really good at getting the tag down really quickly as we saw right there, but just such a good jump there by Cornbloom. Now it looked like it was Rob Vaughn's turn to talk to the umpire, but a swing and a miss by Jarvis. We'll retire him, and that's the first out of the third inning. It's the third strikeout for Jason Savicool. Catcher, Connor Kaskadek. Now Connor Kaskadek, the catcher, grounded out in the second. Savvy's first, runner on second. That's in the air, right center field. Lambros on his horse, going back to the wall. He's got just enough room as he bangs into the wall. Kornbloom heads to third, but it's a big second out. First baseman, Jake Parr. Ball is carrying pretty well here at the Bob tonight with the really warm weather. And Lambros saw this one the entire way. That's a nice play at the wall, but of course, deep enough for the tag. Two outs, though which is a benefit here for Savakul. He's got Jake Parr, the first baseman. Oh my goodness, he swings and misses. The bat goes flying down the left field line. Oh my. Heads up. That was a 130 foot bat toss. Yeah, that was, that was a, yeah. So Parr will get back in the box. That was a big swing and a miss. And he's going to make some adjustments. Good player. Comes in hitting 320 on the year. 
and trying to give Purdue some early insurance here. In the third inning, he's bound behind, nothing in two. Savvy trying to limit the damage and get the Maryland bats back to work. That one low. Schlinger's job becomes even more important in a situation like this with the speedy corner bloom there on third yeah. base. Can't let one get by. You got a fast runner, so pressure on the infield as well. Two and two, that one in the same spot. Now two and two from Savvy. Left center, Lambros coming on. He's not gonna get it. He's gonna have to play it on a bounce. An RBI single for Jake Parr. Purdue goes up three to one. That was a really great at bat by Parr falling behind initially 0-2, taking a couple of pitches that were close on some of those. And just get enough of it just to poke it in the no man's land there in center field and get that run in for Purdue. Runs aren't easy to come by when Jason Savicool are on the mound and Purdue got to be very thankful to have three on the board yeah. at this point. Now Paul Tate's the second baseman, that one low. So Jason Savicool having to lumber a bit here in the third inning. That one in there for a strike, one and one. So two runs home for Purdue here in the top of the third after Maryland tied the game in the second on the Zmarzlag homer. And now Jason Savickle trying to just limit the damage. Two and one. A lot of pitches early in this game for Maryland's ace. That one almost caught the corner, but it's three and one. He's really nibbling a bit here to start the game, it feels like. Just trying to get the corners, and it's not really working. Now three and one on Tate's. There's a strike, runner takes off for second. The throw is going to be in time. Luke Schlinger right on the money, Keister the tag. Two homers will put Shaw all by himself. First one is outside. Shaw awaits a 1-0 from Steven. Popped up out of play foul. Do you think the, the pressure of knowing how, because he obviously knows how close he is to the record. Do you think maybe the pressure can get in his head a little bit? Maybe a little bit, but probably something that he doesn't think about too much. You're going to have to play every approach is different from the next one and just something that he's used to doing every single day within this Maryland program. That one to the backstop. I mean, he goes about his business like no one I've ever seen. I mean, he lives the game of baseball, and it feels like he's just going to have such a great career in the pros when he's done at Maryland. And the legacy he's going to leave at Maryland is unmatched as well. It's the 2-1 to third. Stevens up with it and throws out Shaw. Wanted, wanted to make sure that the, the call was there before said anything one away here in the third. No extracurriculars on that one. Stevens yeah. with a nice play gets Shaw out by a step. Now Ian Patrutz. He was robbed of extra bases. It was a fantastic catch by Mike Bolton Jr. to end the bottom of the first. 
Hits this deep to right field, but he pulled it foul. Boy, it had the distance for sure. Right side is just the wrong shape. Just barely missed the car coming right there. Yeah, that, that would have been extremely problematic. Nothing in one on Ian Petrutz. Strike two. Nothing in two on Ian Petrutz. Stays alive. So Ian trying to get on base here. In front of Eddie Hakopian. He might be able to. This is deep to center field, but at the wall, a nice leaping catch by Cornbloom. Boy, Ian's been robbed twice. A couple of really nice plays from these Boilermaker outfielders, and they're really keeping Maryland at bay to this point. Boy, so the Purdue outfield showing out. In game one of this series, and now Eddie Hakopian hits. Eddie struck out his first time up. Trying to extend the inning for Bobby's Marzalak. Check swing roller on the first one. It's going to stay fair in a real easy inning. Cornbloom got on, stole second. And then Jake Parr drove him in before he was caught stealing with Paul Tates up at the bat. And Tates will lead off the fourth inning and takes a strike. So Terps trying to pick up their fourth straight Big Ten Series opening win. They knocked off Iowa, they knocked off Rutgers, and they knocked off Ohio State on Fridays. Now they're trying to take the first from Purdue. That one misses, moves it to one and two. And you can usually attribute winning those opening games to the guy on the mound right here, Jason Savicool, just gutting out starts from Maryland last weekend against Ohio State, had some back spasms in the sixth inning. Rob Vaughn came out, told him to finish the job, and that's what Savicool did. That one low, two and two. Yeah, Savvy, such a tough, a tough guy, and he absolutely loves the game of baseball. I don't think there's anyone on this team who loves baseball more than Jason Savickle. He's always talking about it, thinking about it. Matt Shaw almost made a throw to try and get Paul Tates, but it's a well-placed infield single by the Purdue second baseman. baseman. Pretty good range Jeff by Shaw Peter. just to get over there. Tates. Some pretty good speed, the ball hit. Not quite sharp enough for Shaw to have a play. Pretty smart decision just to eat the ball right there. Now Joe Stevens. Stevens reached on an error hit to Shaw back in the second. Shows bunt, pulls it back, snap throw to first. Ooh, that was almost a disaster. Schliger. Let that ball go, and Hakopian made a nice play to keep it on the infield. That one almost looked like it was headed for right field, and it looked like Eddie tried to fake out. Tate's over there at first a little bit as well. Check on him. It's always important as the runner to know where the ball is at all times, because yep. sometimes you'll see the infielders pretend that it got away and try to catch the runner off guard a little bit. That was pitch number 60 for Savicool. 61 is in there for a strike, so pitch count. Something to monitor here as we move to the middle innings. You know Savvy's capable of taking the ball as deep as he needs to go. He's thrown 100 in his career many times. Obviously, you'd like to 
throw them out as much as you can. The Maryland bullpen is pretty taxed. They, the Terps played Tuesday and Wednesday. They had to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pitchers on Wednesday, and they used seven on Tuesday against GW, so they're really hoping, Rob Vaughn is, and pitching coach Mike Morrison really hoping that Jason Savickle can go deep into this game. That one misses as well. Feel like with two strikes at all that Savvy's trying to dance a little bit too much instead of just attacking these Purdue hitters. Yeah, a little bit. He's been a pretty cautious of some of these Boilermaker hitters, but he hasn't really gone into that two seam, that cutting action that we've seen him. He's been kind of moving towards that off speed that's been outside. 2-2 two -two is a breaking ball here, hit foul. And it's two and two. You got Stevens and then Valdez next. Nobody out here in the Purdue half of the floor. 3-1, the Boilers lead the Terps and they're keeping a close eye on Paul Tates. Again, the biggest threats in the Purdue lineup to run are the top two guys, Bolton and Kornblum. That one missed barely for ball three. Tate's on the air is two for two on steals. And a payoff coming to Stevens. Got him swinging, runner goes for second, the throw is in time! Strike him out, throw him out, double play, there's two gone in the fourth. Well done. It'll be six, seven, eight for the Terps in the fourth, Smarz like Lambros and Orr. Bobby hit a home run his first time, he's accounted for the only Maryland offense of the game. Strike on the corner to start. Steven entering the fourth inning. That was pitch number 57. And the 0-1 is inside. Mentioned Bobby's had a home run earlier this week as well, the grand slam against GW, and now a home run here today. So a real good week for Maryland's left fielder, and now he gets hit. And we'll head down to first. Looks like the fastball just slipped out of the hands. Steven right there caught Bobby on that left elbow. And He'll take it, he'll take his base. Maryland will need all the base runners they can get trailing by two here. Now Lambros, he reached on that controversial play. Back in the second, he was called safe on a play where it looked pretty clear that he was out. As it's 3-1 Purdue. Here in the fourth, Lambros, an 0-1 count. Elijah came over this season from South Carolina. Got a little bit of action for the Gamecocks last season, but moves closer to home. This season, and has filled in so well for the Terps in center field, taking over for Bubba Aline. Big shoes to fill, and he's done well. Definitely, and not only has he done it at the plate, he's played really exceptional there in center field. The oh, his defense, most important yeah. position there in the outfield. His defense is extremely good. He's made some really nice catches. He had a home run robbery at Iowa that left all of us pretty speechless. And that was a big part in helping Maryland secure that win over the Hawkeyes in the series opener. Got a 1-1 count now.
as Steven sets and fires inside. Lambros for runners on, hitting 266 on the year. Elijah, with a couple years of eligibility left as well, so for the time being, he's looking good to keep that spot in center field. There's a bunch of guys on this Maryland team who are gonna have much bigger roles next year. As you look at who you, who you would think is leaving, all the top three guys in the order, Schlinger, LaRusso, and Shaw, all likely headed elsewhere after this year. Lambros is a guy that could have a much bigger role offensively next season for the Terps. Him and Ian Patrutz and Eddie Hakopian as well. I yeah, can't forget about Matt Woods. This is his final yeah. year of eligibility transferring over from Bryant, so he'll be gone after the year as well. Should we see some of those young outfielders, Zach Martin, Luke Zeisloft, getting some more run. Two and two on Lambros. Good piece. Stays alive. Terps are really making Cal Steven work in this game. Some really good at bats, some long at bats, a lot of foul balls. The Purdue bullpen's had its struggles this year, so the sooner the Terps can get into that, the better position they'll be in to take game one. Lambros into center, Kornblum racing over. He's got it on the track. A nice play. Smarzglack scampers back to first. You figure he's going to have a much bigger role next year. The Terps' injury problems are a reason why he's getting the start at DH today. He also can play just about anywhere on the field that you put him. It's a very versatile player. And Rob Vaughn really values that from his guys. Or played second base last year for the Terps at times. And also played in the outfield. Terps looking for win number 24 on the year tonight. And number seven in Big Ten play. 101 or. Chopper foul. The success has been pretty good in the early part of Big Ten play for Maryland. But like we said earlier, just struggling to get those weekend series sweeps. Purdue has fared pretty well in their weekend series as well. That's what's kind of kept them afloat here in the conference. Yeah, they come in at 500, but when you're seven and five in conference play, makes you makes you look a lot better. One and one on Orr, inside. And they Purdue has some good wins this season as well. The Boilers have played a difficult schedule. They also had a series against Ole Miss. They were swept by the Rebels. They lost a series to Michigan State. They took two out of three from Northwestern. They took two out of three from Minnesota, and just recently took two out of three from Penn State. Very similar breakdown on how Maryland's conference series have gone. Not a lot of sweeps. The Big Ten, there's very log jammed in the middle, the standings, and a lot of baseball yet to be played. It's gonna be a fascinating final month of the regular season. Or watches one upstairs for a full count. We'll see if Bobby takes off here on 3-2. He's got three steals on the year, but you'd want to try and void to strike him out, throw him out, and double play to end the inning. That's what happened to Purdue in the top half of the fourth. And they'll look at Bobby just to make sure. Still remaining on the Purdue schedule, I mentioned it's really brutal. Down the stretch, they'll play Rutgers, Indiana, and Nebraska. The, the Huskers and Hoosers currently one and two in the Big Ten standings. Another look 
at Smarzalat. So what Steven comes in with here on 3-2. Good at bat from Jacob Orr. Payoff on the way, Bobby stays put, the pitch cut on and missed. Swings at the first and hits it into right center field for a base hit, Smarzlek around second on his way to third, he'll stop there. Luke tonight grounded out in the first and walked in the second. He had a nine pitch at bat in the second inning that allowed him to get on base. You know he loves that first one, but instead will take on the corner. Wants to make sure he's getting that call for his pitchers as well. Always good to check. Now nothing in one. Keister on first, Smars like a third, Luke on the ground to second. Tates is there, throws to first, and the Terps leave two on in the fourth. No runs, one hit, no errors, two men left. We're off to the fifth. State, two one run wins, nine eight and four to three over the Nittany Lions last Saturday. And then two midweek wins for Purdue this week. 3-2 against Ball State, and then they put up 16 on Butler on Wednesday. So they're playing their best ball of the season, and they picked a good time to do it. Yeah, both Maryland and Purdue tonight. 16 runs for Purdue on Wednesday, Maryland 19. So some highly anticipated offense coming in tonight, and Purdue has had their run at Savicool. Three runs already on the board. Ground ball to short, Matt Shaw to first. Good start to the inning for Savakul, one away. As Albrecht is retired, it'll send it back to the top for Mike Bolton Jr. Good play here by Shaw and a good scoop by Eddie Hakopian as well. I mentioned he's never played first in his career before this season and Rob Vaughn was so impressed with the job he did at the offseason. Him and Ian Petrutz. Both capable of playing first base, but it's been Eddie most of the way. Really all of the way for Maryland. Big shoes to fill there as well for the program legend Maxwell Costas, now in the Baltimore Orioles organization. That one up and in on Bolton, two and one. Yeah, usually your first baseman, a big power guy like Costas was for Maryland in the previous season. Hakopian, not quite the same there, but hitting for a little bit more average for the Terps and then also playing a very exceptional first base. I'm sure they can live with that. And that's something Rob Vaughn mentioned preseason. He feels like first base is not a position anymore for someone who can just hit the ball and not really be athletic over there. He feels like he wants his first baseman to be athletic he said he wants a guy there who can almost play shortstop, but is at first base instead as Savical issues a walk to Bolton with one out. Got 21 this season, he's 21 for 24. He takes off here, the pitch is a ball, the throw by Schliger is late. He's two steals away. Awfully fast. And a runner at second with one out. Tied for 22 in all of Division I with steals on the season. This one moves him into the top 20. Got a great jump. And Schliger's throw just a bit high. And they're going to keep a real close eye on him at second base. Now the danger's really on here. Runner in scoring position, already trailing by two runs. This is where Savakul thrives coming out of the jam like this. 1-0, good breaking ball in there for a strike. No action yet in either bullpen as we are in the fifth inning now. That fourth inning was huge for Savicool to get out of without any run scoring. He didn't throw a ton of pitches either. That double play really helped. And Savicool's pitch count gets up there in the 80s. 
Oftentimes, a normal baseball fan might say his pitch count's getting pretty high, but that seems like almost nothing when Savicool's on the mound going 100 plus pitches the majority of times he starts games. Pitch number 79 was outside to make it three and one. For Cornbloom, you got Jake Jarvis on deck, the right fielder. He struck out twice tonight. Got to make a good pitch here, three and one. Chopper to third, a real tough play. It's going to be foul. That's a very, very smart play by Nick LaRusso. Now on Cornbloom, and it's ball four. So back-to-back -back walks, looking for more. First from Savvy. On the ground, little Chopper. Jason's going to go to second. They're going to call it a foul ball. Must have hit off the foot of Jarvis there. I think He's it did, yeah. He looks to be in a little bit of pain. Rob Vaughn is going to ask for an ex explanation, and it did hit off the foot of Jarvis, as you can see on the replay. Never a good feeling at all. Nope. So strike one on Jake Jarvis. Swing and a miss. Jarvis is a Juco guy, a transfer from Central Arizona Junior College. He's originally from Gilbert, Arizona. He was the runner up for the Arizona Gatorade Player of the Year in 2018. And on his senior night, hit a go-ahead grand slam. That's pretty cool. But here he'll strike out a huge second out for Jason Savicool. And Jarvis has struck out for the third time. And the inning rests in the hands of Connor Kaskinet. He's 0 for 2, a ground out in the second, a fly out in the third. A big batter in this game. First one, shot foul. As the sun has just about set, just past eight o'clock here in CP, Ben Reitman, Ben Strober with you for Big Ten Plus, all of our great crew back in the Xfinity Center. One and one now from Savakul to Kaskinet. In the Maryland half of the fifth, the Terps will have two, three, and four. LaRusso, Shaw, and Petrutz. This is on the ground, and a nice job. Kevin Keister will step on the bag, and Purdue is kept off the scoreboard in the fifth. The Terps. In the Maryland order. LaRusso has 0 for, excuse me, he's 1 for 2. He singled back in the first, grounded out to in the second. You mentioned those power numbers, Ben. Last year, eight guys in the Maryland lineup, 10 homers or more. And we had a violation on the pitcher, so it's going to be 1 and 0, a pitch clock violation, so it's 1 and 0 before the at bat begins, and now it's 2 and 0. The new rules, we finally got the to new see rules. here tonight. It's taken everybody a bit of time to get used to. You figure kind of a transition year, and then next year it'll be pretty easy to work with. LaRusso watches one high now, 3 and oh, That would look pretty good. But Jeff Doy doesn't give the call. 3-0 and oh on LaRusso. Washes a strike. And LaRusso, again, is having one of the best seasons of any hitter in the Big Ten. The numbers he's putting up are just eye-popping. Came in it today hitting 365. The 14 homers, the 62 RBIs. An OPS over 1.2. And for reference, OPS is on-base percentage plus slugging. 
anywhere around 900 is considered really good. If you're hitting 1.900, if you're hitting 1.2, that's just off the charts good. But a nice job by Steven to come back from 3-0 to get him. And there's one out in the fifth. How about the Fourth strikeout right there from the Purdue pitcher. He fall behind after the pitch clock violation against one of the top hitters in the entire country. We've talked about a guy who gets on base as much as the Russo. That's a heck of a job to get the first out in the fifth. So now Matt Shaw, 0 for 2 as well. Still just one homer away from tying the program record of 43. And you gotta think it's just a matter of time before he does it. Two ground outs for him, one to the pitcher and one to third. He's behind, excuse me, it's one and one now on Shaw. The most outstanding player in the Cape Cod League this past summer, the, the best summer ball league that there is. And Matt Shaw helped the Bourne Braves to a title along with teammate Nigel Belgrave. But a cool experience for Shaw getting to do that. He's from the New England region, from Brimfield, Massachusetts. So that had to be really cool for him getting to spend the summer playing in his home state. Behind one and two here. Roller hit to third. Stevens charges, throws close play, but Shaw is retired. Two out in the fifth. Maryland crowd doesn't like it. See Stevens make a couple really nice plays there at third base, but a nice job by him. Just coming up and attacking the chopper, fielding on a couple of bounces and throwing in time to get Shaw, who has pretty decent speed out of the box. So in the third inning, Steven got through Shaw, Petrutz, and Hakopian, one, two, three. Now he's got a chance to go through LaRusso, Shaw, and Petrutz, one, two, three. Petrutz swings at the first one, hits it high in the air to center. Kornblum's back, he's gonna have room. How about Cal Steven? One, two, and three, right through Shaw, excuse me, through LaRusso, Shaw, and Petrutz. We're through five, it's still 3-1 Purdue. He trails 3-1 entering the sixth inning. And his first to Jake Parr is a ball. That was his 89th pitch on the evening, and he works through these games. No surprise that he's out here for another inning, even with his pitch count getting up there. Maryland bullpen is beginning to loosen up a little bit. You got to figure the guys that have a better shot of pitching tonight. Kenny Lippman didn't pitch on Wednesday. He's a guy that likely would be summoned out of the bullpen for Maryland today. Probably Nigel Belgrave and David Falco. Good to go as well. And the Terps might need all hands on deck tonight. Trailing by two, entering the sixth inning. Now two and two for Savvy on Jake Parr, who's one for two with a single and an RBI. This one in the right center field, that'll drop. It's another hit for Parr, the leadoff man on for Purdue once again. Now here in the sixth inning. Second baseman, Paul Cates. The ball hit on the rope, going down and get it on the outside and low fastball from Savakul. So now Paul Tates. He's been on base twice. He reached on an error by Kevin Keister in the second and then singled back in the fourth. He watches a breaking ball upstairs for ball one. Rob Vaughn has complete confidence in Jason Savical. He'll go with him until he absolutely can't anymore. That last pitch for Savvy was 94. 
And 95's another base hit in the left. Second single for Tate's and Purdue's got first and second. Now Joe Stevens, but first to check. And he showed bunt after Savicool turned and. That's the only explanation that I could come with, up with here. When he stepped off, he did not throw it to second base in time. All right, so it's 1-0. Now Steven shows bunt, and he fouls it off of Luke Schliger. And he'll put the count at 1-1. One one. So a good opportunity for Purdue to lay down a sacrifice. LaRusso standing in front of the third base bag. Hakopian as well, not holding the runner on. And you got double play depth in the middle infield. 1-1, one, one, outside, throw back to second. Not in time, nice idea by Luke Schliger. So now two and one on Joe Stevens, top of the sixth inning here in College Park. 3-1 Purdue leading the opening game of this series. That one fouled out of play right side, two and two. Savvy trying to just get as many as he can before Rob Vaughn has to take him out. 2-2, big pitch, down low, 3-2, and two, and now real danger here. A full count with runners on first and second, and there's nobody out in the sixth inning. You do not want to load the bases for this part of the Purdue lineup coming up soon. On the ground to first, it's a fair ball. Hakopian's gonna step on first and get an out there, so it essentially works as a sacrifice. On the edge of the grass, or the artificial turf here at the bob, if you will, in the middle infield back, but it won't matter, maybe. Foul ground, Hakopian racing. Does he have a play? No. He does not. It's strike one on Valdez. See if they have the contact play on for par third. That is a big run waiting out there at third base. A two run lead and a three run lead are just so different. Just a much different feeling. Right to third, LaRusso can't get it. It's gonna score two. Valdez, a two run double. Purdue's got a five one lead. Yeah, rough one for Savvy tonight. Rob Bond's gonna keep him out there for now, but you gotta figure the end of his night is, is near. The 1 0 is cut on and missed by Albrecht. So Purdue now has opened up a four run lead here in the top of the sixth over Maryland. Trying for a big win here at the Bob. Now LaRusso can't have a play on this one, it's in the left field. Valdez will stop at third, they're at the corners, and there's only one out. And Jason Savicool really struggling now. Logan Ott is throwing in the Maryland bullpen. The lefty getting loose, and he is going to come into the game. <laughs> to hold Purdue right here. They're at the corners with one out, but Maryland's already down five. Now a bunt attempt from Bolton. It's foul. Vaughn likes Ott in these situations because he's a guy who fills up the zone a lot. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. He gets hit around a little bit. He's had some issues with the long ball, but in the situation right here, they want him to put the ball over the plate and get the guys to put the ball in play, potentially end this inning. Nothing in one. Bolton shows bunt again. Ball one. That was, that was really tough on Savickle especially giving up those runs to the eight and nine hitters. And now you gotta turn it back to the top. And Mike Bolton's already had a heck of a game tonight. Shows it again and gets it down, it's foul. Hakopian picked it up just after it went to the right of the first base line. And now two strikes and boy, a strikeout here would do wonders for Maryland. 
gonna take away that potential sacrifice fly or contact play potentially here. Of course, ground ball could end the inning, but have to be sharply hit. Yep. Now one and two. And a ball outside. You got Kornblum on deck. And a really tough guy to double up at the plate. 2-2, two -two, they get a ground ball. Hakopian will take it to first. And the run is gonna score as well. Maybe some miscommunication there. I don't think Hakopian knew that the runner was coming to the plate. And now it's 6-1 Purdue. Well, Valdez was smart there. He kind of faked out Hakopian. He looked as if he wasn't going to go home. Let's take a look at it. See, Hakopian makes the play, and he'll make the play at first. And then Valdez doesn't decide to come home yeah, he until turned and looked. a little late, and it was already too late at that point. Hakopian could only put his arms up. So the bases are empty, but Purdue has a three spot here in the sixth inning. Excuse me, the bases are not empty. There's a runner on second. That's Albrecht, and they're going to check on him. So six to one now. Purdue has taken full command of this game, and there's nobody up in the boiler bullpen. Face it in the left. Zamarzalek's throw to the plate is not coming. It's cut off now, seven to one. It's a boiler beatdown here in College Park. And the way the games have gone for Maryland this season with the bullpen, when they haven't got what they've needed out of the starting pitching, this is where things start to look really bleak if you're Maryland. They're not hitting the ball particularly well tonight and now going to have to go bullpen the rest of the way. I mean, the depth, as we said, not as much as you would hope tonight anyway with the amount of pitchers having to be used in the two midweek games. This is a really tough position to be in if you're the Terps. Greg Goff is going to go talk to the home plate umpire, Jeff Doyle. I think Purdue's going to, yeah, Purdue's going to bring in a pinch hitter. It's going to be Keenan Taylor off the Purdue bench. He's going to hit for Jake Jarvis, who struck out three times. And Taylor will pinch hit here in the sixth. First one is up and away from Ott. Logan Ott trying to get Maryland out of the sixth inning, but it's looking pretty bleak for the Terps, trailing seven to one, and now it's two and oh. What a sixth inning for Purdue. They've scored four runs. Ott comes set for the 2-0. Right center field, Lambros is racing over. He's got it. And that will finally put an end to the sixth inning. Purdue scores four times. And now the Terps find themselves trailing seven to one. As we start at the bottom of the six, Jason Savicool was pretty good up until the sixth inning. His final line, five and a thirds, nine hits, seven runs, six of those were earned, three walks, five strikeouts. He threw 105 pitches. Eddie Hakopian hits this one in the air. Deep left center, and that's the way the Terps start the sixth inning. Eddie Hakopian, a good response for Maryland. It's seven to two. Exactly what Maryland needed. They hadn't been hitting the ball well most of this night. And after what transpired in that top half of the sixth inning, 
Talk about starting it with a bang. Eddie Okopi, not a big power guy, but just seeing through that fastball and is taking it out at the deepest part of the park as well. Eddie Hakopian, another home run for him. That's three games in a row with a home run for Eddie Hakopian. And speaking of home runs, here's Bobby Zamara's like he's already got one, but swings and misses here for a strike one. That just put a little bit of a new energy into the ballpark here. Let's see if Maryland can build off of that a little bit. Purdue's finally getting their bullpen working with the righty throwing down there. Two righties, in fact. Zamarzlek quickly down, nothing in two. O2 oh, upstairs. And that was a no doubt shot two from Hakopi and sounded real good off the bat. And gives Maryland a little bit of life in the bottom of the sixth as Marzlak takes strike three call. Fifth strikeout of the night for Steven, one away in the sixth. Elijah Lambros, 0 for 2, reached on an error back in the second and then lined out in the fourth. He hit one of the furthest balls I've ever seen hit at this part on Wednesday night in the left center. It was an absolute moonshot. And he's ahead 1-0. Purdue with four runs in the top of the sixth inning. Maryland's responded for one so far. Here in the sixth, Lambros could not help himself on that one. Check swing, strike one. One and one on Elijah. Now strike two, boy, I'm really, I've been really impressed with Cal Steven today. He's showed up the zone and he's had good numbers to show for it. Even when he has, he's gotten Maryland to ground out, pop out, when you name it, a couple strikeouts thrown in there. Well, he's got five, a really solid pitching performance. And the only, he's only made two mistakes and they've both been with no one on base. Lambros watches a breaking ball in the dirt, now two and oh. One out here in the sixth, one already home. Terps trying to get a couple more here. Back in the sixth. Swing and a miss by Lambros. Two out, sixth strikeout for Steven. Now Jacob Orr. Pitch count for Steven up in the 90s. So unsure should we see him another inning potentially, but Purdue's bullpen has been a little bit of an issue for him yeah. as, as for Maryland, so this game could be far from over based on what we've seen in the early part of this season from both yeah, teams. Yeah, both teams' bullpens, not great. So we got a lot of, and we have a lot of baseball left, so anything can happen, that's for sure. Nothing in one on Orr. That pitch from Steven was number 97, so you would think this is his last inning and he's looking to finish with a flourish. He's got Orr in an 0-2 hole. In the dirt. Jacob Bohr getting the start tonight. Again, Maryland hopes to have Matt Woods back pretty soon. Still coming back from a concussion. But Orr getting the start at DH tonight with Ian Putrut starting in right. One and two on Orr. 
and he's gone looking. What a start from Cal Stevens. Six innings, just two runs and seven strikeouts. We're going to the seventh in CP. It's seven to Purdue. It'll be the catcher, Casquinet, and then Parr, and then Tates. That's a good start on the ground to LaRusso. One gone in the seventh. Good confidence boost, too, for Van Buren getting that first out on just one pitch. Yeah, Van Buren had a couple midweek starts for this Maryland team that didn't go as planned for him, had some issues with his control, had some issues just walking batters as a whole or putting guys on base. So they've been trying to work on that for him, and it's a guy that Maryland is going to hope to use a lot more in the next coming yeah, years. A lot of potential. Rob Vaughn said he had the best offseason of any Maryland pitcher by far, and he was so impressed with his stuff when he came back. And he, said he certainly had some good moments this year for the Terps, no doubt about it, and certainly would is a candidate to get some starts next year. He's got par ahead, nothing in two. That one low. So Van Buren trying to get out of the seventh quickly. A one-two pitch. That's on the ground to short. Matt Shaw and a couple of hops. High throw, but Hakopian holds the bag. Two out. Now Paul Tate's the second baseman's been on base three Seven times baseman, tonight. Paul Tate's. So Ryan Van Buren, two up, two down in the seventh. That one fouled away onto campus drive, nothing in one. And a car passes by. I just every single time a foul ball is hit over there. You just kind of have to hold your breath. Cut on and missed. Good pitch there. Tied him up inside. 0-2. Really big pitch here. Can he get out of this inning unscathed with so little pitches thrown? Close, but outside and no swing. So now one and two. Terps in the seventh inning. We'll have nine, one, and two up. And now two and two. Two, two to Tates from Van Buren. Is outside, now he's worked it full. Can't have a two out walk right here. That is the one thing you really can't afford. Payoff, and it's a ball four, so there is the two out walk. He got ahead 0-2 and then put Tates on board. That'll bring up Joe Stevens, the third baseman. Third baseman Joe Stevens. Stevens today 0 for 3, reached on an error back in the second. And Buren will have to dial back in. Purdue, an opportunity here that they would like to cash out on. First from Van Buren. Low, he's missed with five straight. One and out. On Stevens. Up the middle, Keister can't get it. It's through for a hit. And after quickly getting two out, now Purdue has first and second. Sometimes all the momentum you need comes from that two out walk, like you said, how important it is to give it up. And now walk then the base hit. This puts a much more dangerous position for Valdez, who had the big hit earlier in the game. This is what happened in the sixth inning. The bottom of the Purdue order did serious damage and that fed the top. That's a laced foul, nothing in one. Little out in front there for Valdez, who had that two-run double that barely missed the glove of Nick LaRusso at third. If he was playing normal position, probably makes the catch no problem, but he was in with a runner at third and less than two out. So he couldn't come up with it. Uh 
A 7-2 Purdue lead in the seventh. Boilers looking to win their fifth in a row. 1-1 one, one up the middle, Shaw can't get it. It's in the center field. The throw from Lambros goes to Shaw. It's eight to two. That one stinks. First one to Albrecht is grounded foul. Yeah, Van Buren was rolling through. He got the first two batters on just a couple of pitches and then the walk in two singles. Purdue's added another here in the seventh. He shows bunt with two out, gets it down. Tricky play, LaRusso, the throw's gonna be late. And the bases are loaded. All the momentum in favor of Purdue, and it all started with that two out walk. Mike Bolton, Jr. And now the top of the order up again for Purdue. Good play by LaRusso. Just a really good bunt. And now the bases are loaded for Bolton, who looks at a ball. I'm not sure where it missed. 1 0. Boy, it's in danger of getting really ugly here in the final three innings for Maryland. Hakopian at first will take it to the bag. And one is all Purdue will get. Kevin Keister's one for two. He singled back in the fourth. He'll lead off the seventh for Maryland. Two solo shots. One from Zamara's leg, one from Hakopian is all the Maryland offense in this game. They trailed by six runs as we enter the bottom of the seventh. Kevin Keister, Luke Schliger, and Nick LaRusso to hit for Maryland in the seventh. And Keister gets drilled on the first pitch. Or excuse me, the 1-0 pitch. Another one from Cal that's got away on the fastball, squared on the elbow. Seen him do that to Mars Lack a little bit earlier. And as we'll, we'll see how long Greg Goff goes with Steven. That was pitch 102. And the top of the Maryland order is up. Could be a dangerous spot here if Purdue isn't careful. Schliger, 0 for 2 with a walk. The first to Luke is upstairs. A righty throwing in the Purdue bullpen. Got to figure that change could come soon if Steven can't get out of the seventh. The 1 0 to Schliger. Low ball two. And you see the Maryland dugout trying to get the team a little bit of juice. The sixth inning was just so deflating for Maryland. They were only down three to one, but four runs off Jason Savickle really just killed the momentum that Maryland had. Any momentum Maryland might have had is they'll chase Keister back. Maryland, a very potent offensive team. All it takes is one really big right. inning. It's happened multiple times this year, a lot last year, and. It's bound to happen at any moment. Maryland definitely not out of this game to this point despite the score. It's 2-0 on Luke Schliger. It's 2-1 on Luke Schliger. That one on the outside corner. Terps and Boilers will play two more this weekend here in College Park. For a three-game set, 2-1 to Schliger, that's ball three. And this potentially could be the last batter that Steven faces with the righty on deck in LaRusso. Three and one on Luke Schliger. Big pitch here. Keister at first, 3-1 to Luke. Strike two, Luke thought it was ball four. And he'll have to get back in the box and regroup. 
Really interested to see how long Greg Goff lets Steven go. Three, two on Schliger. Let's see if Keister does any running here. He's not. The pitch is ball four. First two are on in the seventh for Maryland. Second walk of the day for Luke Schliger. And that will be the end of the line for Cal Steven, and he was awfully good. And he's got an opportunity to do damage. Nobody out here in the seventh. If there's a time for Maryland to get back in the game, the time is now. LaRusso one for three. And the first from Suval is a strike on the corner. LaRusso thought it was inside. Chance to add to his Big 10 lead in RBIs. Nothing in one. Little flare, right center, this is gonna drop. And it'll load the bases. Jarvis and Kornblum were extremely deep in the outfield and that's gonna allow Maryland to load the bases with nobody out. Biggest part of the game now, Matt Shaw coming to the plate in a really big spot here. It is a huge spot for Matt Shaw, and boy, wouldn't this be a time to tie Maryland's all-time home run record. Strike one. So Maryland has loaded the bases in the seventh spot, down by six, and as we said, both bullpens are not great for either team. Now nothing in one. Shaw evens up the count, a ball and a strike. You got Petrutz next. Righty throwing in the Purdue bullpen. A lot of grand slams this year. Yes. For Maryland, it's kind of like the gift that's kept on giving. The Terps have seven grand slams hit by six different players. Shaw has one of them. And looks at the one one outside. Don't want to walk him. And you got no place to put him. Keister at third, Schliger at second, LaRusso at first. Two, one. Inside, three and one. And now the Maryland fans beginning to make a little bit of noise. The dugout getting back into it as well. 3-1 on Matt Shaw. Ball four. Shaw walks in a run. Eight to three. Ball one. Petrutz ahead 1-0, Ian's 0 for 3 today. Good time to break out of that right now. 1-0, Chopper to, and it's through! It's through on the right side, it's gonna score two! It's 8-5! to five. Eddie into right, that's gonna drop, it's gonna be fair! Shaw is in! Patrut stops at third. It's an RBI double for Eddie. It's eight to six. A base hit would tie the game. If it's into the outfield, that's ball one. Zamar's like has a homer already today. What a turn of events. Four already home in the seventh for Maryland. 
foul, one and one. And Suval taking his time. One one to Bobby, swing and a miss, one and two. Big cut from Zamarzlak. He tried to give the Terps the lead right there, but couldn't do it. Now one and two on Zmarzalak. Barely got a piece and stays alive. Still nobody out for Maryland here in the seventh. Terps have turned this game on its head. They were just down eight to two. And now it's eight to six. Zamar is like a one-two count, and he strikes out. They miss the tag, they'll throw to first and retire Zmarzalek. Thinking about a squeeze play to get it within one. Lambros looks at a strike. With one out, that's definitely a possibility. And of course, with Lambros, one of the speedier guys on the team up there, certainly a chance. You got Stevens, the third baseman, about a step behind the grass, Lambros checks his swing, one and one. Suval trying to find an answer to get Purdue out of the seventh. Maryland scratched across four. The one, one. Lambros, big cut, didn't get it. One and two. Jacob Orr on deck for the Terps. He's the DH tonight. Lambros behind, a ball and two strikes. It's right center field, that's gonna drop, and that will bring home one. Swope is waving around another, the throw! In time, they got him! Hakopian cut down at the plate, so give Lambros one RBI, now Jacob Orr. Ball one. Boy, what a, yeah, what a job by Purdue executing that relay to cut down Hakopian at the plate and keep the lead. That was awfully good. Execution there by the Boilers. Jacob Orr ahead, one and zero. Oh. Cut on and missed. One and one. Five runs in this inning for Maryland, Ben, is something that we've seen them do multiple times this year here at the Bob, and Maryland's offense so potent. It can happen at any moment with them. One and one to Orr. That's strike two, so Suval just trying to make sure Purdue's able to keep the lead Going into the eighth inning, it's turned into a fascinating game here at the Bob, eight to seven. Purdue on top of the Terps with still two innings left. One, two on Jacob Orr. That one's in the right and gonna drop. Lambro stops at second. Man, if he's able to drive one. That would do wonders for him. The first one is low from Danley. Keister trying to tie the game or give Maryland the lead potentially. Didn't think we'd be saying that about a half hour ago. 1-0, chopper to short. Albrecht makes the peg and Purdue is out of the seventh inning with the lead. An 8-7 game. Swing and a miss on the first one. A 
0-1 from Falco to Kornblum is a ball. Falco is one of the, I guess, heavier workload guys in the Maryland bullpen. Him and Nigel Belgrave have done a lot of the pitching from this Maryland bullpen that just doesn't have the same prowess, really, I guess you could say, as it did last year. Maryland just really unable this season at times, late in games, to get out of jams. Falco and Belgrave, though, have certainly been the best two options from the bullpen. And a good pitch there on the corner from David. It's two and two. Now two and two. Let's see if Falco can get Cornbloom. Foul out of play. Top of the eighth inning, in case you're just tuning in, Purdue led this game. 7-2, to two. they led it 8-2 to two going into the bottom of the seventh. But Maryland scored five times to short. Shaw on a line, long throw, Hacopian digs it out, one away. Good play by Eddie at first. An even better play by Shaw making that deep throw from the hole in short. A lot of people criticize his arm and yeah. where he'll fit in the MLB. Should he move to second base? Will he stay at short? He's trying to make a case for himself to be a pro shortstop. The turf certainly helps there with the bounce, but I mean, wherever he plays, he's gonna be real good. That's all I know. You could probably put him in center and he'd do just fine. Another pinch hitter for Purdue. This is Camden Melvin. See his stats there. Falco ready for the 0-1. Inside. So one out here in the eighth inning. As Maryland looking to hold Purdue scoreless, that's ball two. Falco spent a number of years with this team. He was relied on heavily last year in the regional and that's one of the big reasons the Terps fell in game seven. They just kind of ran out of pitching and Falco was used a bunch. Big cut and a miss there, two and two. As Melvin stands in the pitch. Liner to Keister, two away. Good play by Kevin. Now two out. Catcher Connor Cascanet. Connor Cascanet. First one is outside. Kaskinet 0 for 4. For the Boilers. Swings at a ball and pops it out of play foul. Now 0 and 2. Now it's 1 and 2, excuse me. That was strike 2. Got to put the Boilermaker away in this moment yep. if you're David Falco. One and two from Falco in the dirt. Now you I mean Purdue with two out today has been so good. You just can't mess around at all. Got to come right after him. That's where they thrived in those two out rallies. That's what happened in that sixth inning. 
2-2 from Falco. On the ground, Hakopian dives, can't get it. It's in the right field. Petrutz over to get it. It's going to be a double for Cascanet. And Purdue once again with two out finds a way to put a man on. A big insurance run waits at second. And that hit him. And here we go again with two out. Regroup and refocus is what's needed for David Falco in this moment right here. He had Purdue on the ropes of a 1-2-3 inning and then the double down the line. Now the first pitch just runs in and hits par on the shoulder right there. He's got to focus in. Paul Tates now. It's been on base four times. Reached on an error back in the second and came around to score. Singled in the fourth in the sixth and then walked in the seventh. Still two out. Nothing in one. Into right, a base hit. Petrutz fields, they're sending the runner around. The throw to the plate is late and Purdue adds an insurance run. It's nine to seven. Now Joe Stevens, runners at the corners and two out. Falco behind now, 1-0. So, I mean, it, it's happened again. It's happened a couple times. Maryland's gotten the first two outs, no problem. And then a barrage of Purdue hits. Nice backhand by Keister. Long throw to first is going to be offline. And Purdue adds a tenth. Four straight Boilermakers have reached with two out in the eighth. It's an extremely deflating moment for this Maryland team to have all the momentum come in their favor after the bottom half of that seventh inning and with two outs here, Purdue has just put it on. CJ Valdez now. Ball one. So David Falco got the first two quickly but since then has not been able to retire a Boilermaker. Swing and a miss by Valdez. Valdez has three RBIs. He's been on base three times. One-one from Falco. That gets away from Schliger and both runners will advance. Second and third now. They have been good all night long, not allowing the ball to get away from him. This one just too far in the dirt from Falco. Two and one from Falco. Foul ball, and Maryland's a strike away from getting out of it. Terps down by three. Strike, three call, and Falco gets out of it. Not before two Purdue three, gets two more on three hits. They leave two. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. It's 10-7, Purdue. For error with only two innings to work with now, but a lot less of a deficit than what they faced. Yep. First one to Schliger, couldn't hold up his swing. Strike one. Danley trying to get Purdue to the ninth with a three run lead. He's got the top of the Maryland order up. Schliger behind, nothing in two. That one might have been a bit low, but Luke didn't get the call. O2 on Luke, upstairs. It's 
So Maryland in danger of losing their first Big Ten Friday night game of the season. Here in the eighth inning, down three, Luke Schliger has an even count, two and two. I mean, it's a much, it's a much different game if, if David Falco is able to get out of that inning unscathed. Top of the order, up down one. You feel like Maryland has a good chance. Definitely. Down three is a different story. And Luke Schliger strikes out looking. Ball one. LaRusso today, two singles, a run in the seventh. Chops this foul by the Maryland dugout, one and one. Terps are trying to stage a comeback late in this game. Jason Savickle started, wasn't great tonight. But the Terps certainly have had their chances and the bullpen just hasn't really helped in this game. It's been that looming issue that we've seen a lot over the past couple of weeks from Maryland. Purdue has had similar issues but Maryland, it looms greater. Yep, that's the case right now. One, two on LaRusso. In the dirt, two and two. Shaw next. Petrutz would follow. Action in the Maryland bullpen. A lefty warming up for the ninth inning. I don't want to assume who it is, but if I had to guess, probably Tommy Kane. Throwing in the bullpen for the Terps. Don't really have good eyesight from here. Still two and two on LaRusso. Jackson Danley, the third pitcher for Purdue today. Cal Stevens started and that was absolutely terrific for Purdue. The bullpen trying to hold it down. LaRusso ahead three and two. Base runner here would be big. Shaw next. And then Patrutz. Three two to LaRusso. Did he go? He went around. Oh, wow, I don't know about that one. And Rob Vaughn is absolutely irate. So here's Shaw, two out, nobody on in the eighth. First to Matt is down low. Danley looking at his pitch com, seeing what they want. One and oh on the shortstop, Shaw, one and one on Shaw. Terps are down to their final four outs tonight. In a game they've had chances, they've just squandered a lot of them. A lot of runners left on today for Maryland. The 1-1 one -one to Shaw is foul. It's 1-2. and two. As Matt digs in for the 1-2. Tough day for Shaw. Hasn't recorded a hit yet. Grounded out three times and walked. He looks at one upstairs. Going back to that LaRusso play over there at first base. 
just I mean what what was your impression of it did you think it was it was a strike three it's it's really tough to tell especially from, from our where vantage we're sitting, point right. but it, it looked like he had held up probably just enough and we had seen ones that looked more like swings that were held up as and appealed to be not swings earlier in the game. Well, here's here's why that's so important is because it's now 3-2 on Shaw, and if you have a runner at first base right now and one out, if Shaw's able to get on, then a tying run would be coming to the plate. Let's see what Shaw does first, though, on 3-2. It's ball four, so that is why Rob Vaughn was so frustrated. Matt Shaw earns a two-out walk. Ian Petrutz, he can make this a one-run game with one swing of the bat. Center field, it's gonna split the gap. Shaw's on his horse. Swope's gonna wave him around. The relay throw to the plate is not made. It's an RBI double for Petrutz, and it's 10 to eight. To the ninth inning with the lead. Strike to Hakopian. Owen one on Eddie. You know he's thinking one thing and one thing only. He took a shot at it but fouls it to right. Now Owen two. O2 to short. Albrecht, nice play, throws to first, and he will send us to the ninth. Maryland. It's 9 1 and 2 for the Boilers. Evan Albrecht, swing and miss, strike one. Andrew Johnson pitching here for Maryland. Matt Swope is the acting head coach now for Maryland now that Rob Vaughn's been ejected, but Mike Morris and the pitching coach is making all the calls, is making all the calls on the mound. Johnson ahead of Albrecht, nothing in two. And a good start to the ninth for Andrew Johnson. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Johnson's first to Bolton. Bolton is up. On the ground a second, Keister, two up, two down in the ninth in the first, which feels like an eternity ago. Ball one upstairs. Excuse me, not Bolton, this is Cornbloom now. Cooper Cornbloom. Pops this up, shallow right. Keister is out, got a beat on it, makes the catch. It's a one, two, three, ninth inning. And Bobby looking to start the ninth off. Been a great ball game tonight here at the Bob. Ben Reitman, Ben Strober with you for Big Ten Plus. Mars Leg watches ball one. Maryland's offense has been the lone thing that's kept them in the game. The bullpen struggled, Savakul struggled. Here we are, still a chance in the ninth. Yeah, not a great day for Maryland's arms, that's for sure. Hasn't been a great week, really, for Maryland's arms. Terps have given up 10 tonight. They gave up 12 to James Madison on Wednesday. They gave up eight to GW on Tuesday. And then on Sunday against Ohio State, they gave up double digits as well. So it's been a really rough stretch for Maryland's pitching recently. 2-0 on Smarzalak. Bobby ahead 3-0. There's action in the Purdue bullpen as well. And 
You figure that Danley's leash is really, really short right here. Definitely at this point of the ball game, Purdue does not want to let Maryland come back in this one. You do not want to keep a pitcher out there who's reeling. 3-0 on Smarzalek. Strike one. Bobby taking all the way there, no doubt about it. Rob Vaughn was ejected in the eighth inning for arguing what turned out to be a pretty big call. The check swing strike three call on Nick LaRusso. The 3-1 to Bobby is strike two. Danley works it back to a full count. Big pitch coming here to Zmarzalak. The payoff, swung on and missed. Ball one, remember Lambros back in the seventh inning was a little gimpy. Back in the seventh inning. And looks at a strike. Lambros to date was 0 for 3 before the seventh and then, and then had was turned out to be the biggest play of the game so far. That's one's outside. Lambros dumped that ball down into right and then one run was into score. Patrutz came in, but then Hakopian was thrown out at the plate. That would have tied the game. And Purdue's been able to hold on to the lead ever since. Lambros is ahead three and one. Tying run on deck if Lambros can get on. It's Jacob Bohr. He's the DH for Maryland. And Matt Swope again making the calls with the bats. Three and one on Elijah Lambros. And he takes ball four, tying runs coming to the plate. In the opening series of the weekend for the Terps at USF, it was a grand slam. It was the first of three grand slams. It was the first home run of the year for Maryland, but he hasn't homered since, and one here would send this place into a frenzy. He's behind 0-1. Now 1-1, it gets away, Lambros to second. That'll be a pass ball. Just got away from the catcher, Casquinet. And Lambros able to head to second. One, one. Out of play foul, one and two. Jacob Bohr. Trying to come up big for the Terps. They've trailed all night. They've never led. Or gets a piece again. And stays alive still. The sophomore digging in, Lambros at second, one away in the ninth. The one two to Orr, deep into right, but not deep enough. Jarvis was back, had to come in, made a sliding catch, puts it away. They were in no doubles defense. In the outfield, Jarvis had to come in to get it. Let's see what happened here. 
Might have misread it a little bit. Went back a little too far, had to come in. Still made the play no problem, and he might have been worried about Lambros there at second base tagging, but the ball was plenty deep enough to get him over. So the final Maryland hope tonight is Kevin Keister. Runner at third, two out. Keister watches the first up high. If Keister can find a way on base, then the winning run would come to the plate. And that winning run would be Luke Schliger. 1 and 0 on Kevin Keister. A strike on the corner. Keister today, one for two, a single, and he was also hit by a pitch. Ball two. A righty is throwing in the Purdue bullpen. Danley has been out there for Purdue since the seventh inning. It's two and one. Cut on and missed, and Maryland down to their final strike tonight. Danley trying to seal it for the Boilers and give them a big win in Big Ten play. 2-2 two -two to Keister. Right field, Jarvis is there, and Purdue hangs on to win. They beat Maryland 10-8, and they pick up their eighth win of the season in Big Ten play.